it created a layer. So this is your hardware, all the machines in their data centers. This is managed by Amazon, right? They have all the hardware and they put two, three different layers, which they call AWS service. They have a network. You can have a network isolation. You have um, disk isolation. You have process isolation. You have data isolation. You have a uh, few more like thread and all other things. We'll talk about that later. So they built this software, this technology is what we call as a AWS now, Azure we call or um, Google, GC, Google Cloud, OCI. So they built this software and they said, okay, we'll provide you a console, what we call is AWS console. Through that, you can just go ahead and request for a hardware. You can say, hey, I want 4 GB RAM, uh, one terabyte of hard disk and something. What they will do is, they will allocate you a virtually <laughs> They will allocate you a system where you can utilize and you can host your details here with separate networking zone, with separate user control, security controls, whatnot. And that is how this AWS has started. Okay. So the idea they brought is two things. Okay. Why it started booming and why it started people started opting for it is that first, not every company wanted to build their own infrastructure, right? It is expensive. What are, what are the things it's expensive, okay? So when you set up a DC data centers, you need to buy hardware. So for that, you need to have a physical location. So you need an office, not office, sorry. Uh, you need uh, what? You need a um, place, right? You need to rent it out or you need to purchase a land. You need to build a constructor building. You need to put those hardwares there. It needs... <laughs> And uh, let me talk to you about the AC. I have been to um, Airtel and few other data centers. The, it is freezing cold, those data centers, right? Those are freezing cold. It is that cold because of the nature of uh, this one, um, the heat which it emits. Also, it has to be super hygiene. So you have to maintain highest level of hygiene so that it doesn't create uh, hardware challenges issues. Uh, you need redundancy. You need higher consistency power, like, you know, the power, uh, the uh, like electricity power should have been uh, better. And on top of it, you need the operation team, both operation team, hardware and software who will manage. Uh, so then you will have one data centers where you can have your, so this is basically a lab, what we call right? So you need to be owner of this lab and that is a costly operation. You want to spin up a company. You want to start and launch a company. Just imagine the pain for getting these things done, right? It is absolute pain. So the AWS said, you don't have to do all this drama. You come to our portal, you request what, what, what do you want? We'll give it to you. You don't have to worry anything about here. We will charge you based on the resources you use. You use 10 servers, each server will cost you for this many users and so and so. We'll bill you on based on that. It's like a renting that. So you are not taking uh, this one, right? Number one, then, also it had given the one more advantage. Now, so the challenges which we are talking about before uh, is that you know you have a load balancer and you have a multiple machines here, S1, S2, S3, and S4. Tomorrow S5 and S6 comes in. You manually go and configure these load balancers and then uh, you don't need it, you remove it, again you reconfigure it. You're doing all these things manually. So scale up and scale down was the challenge. You have to do it manually. In case of cloud, <clears throat> you can do the scale up and scale down. So you are running an e-commerce company. You told AWS, hey, from date uh, 28th November to 6th December, I want 100 machines. From then onwards, I want only five machines. And to do this, you just need to configure one YAML or JSON file. You define your parameters, you deploy it, and sleep peacefully. Automatically on 28th November at so-and-so time, automatically 100 machine will come up 
it will deploy all your changes code and everything it will start running your server all traffic will be served and automatically on 6 december it will bring down to the five machines and automatically it will be done your billing will be done for 100 machines only for during that period imagine the pain of running the same business for yourself so these are the benefits of getting the cloud computing and that is why it boomed like crazy right uh, now there are there are few concerns which were there that one is the monopoly um, so people were scared like the big enterprise company uh, they don't tend to go with this approach because of the monopoly what if i move entirely migrate entirely entire my um, infrastructure to the aws and tomorrow aws increases their charges or they start blackmailing not blackmailing it's basically creating a monopoly that you know everything um, will go through them and they will be in charge not this so the company started opting for something a very very famous these days is the hybrid model right so what they do is they do hybrid model in multiple terms right so now the uh, aws has come up azure has come up right gc cloud there are three main players right and their own dc so the bigger companies like you know walmart or flipkart or anything right what they do is i am not sure about flipkart yet but uh, you know the other bigger company like g or uh, flipkart um, walmart and all that right or um, uh, mastercard what they do is they do a hybrid approach so uh, suppose they need 100 machines right so 20 machines they procure from aws 20 they get it from here and uh, 40 they get from here 60 they get from here something sort of so why they do it because tomorrow if they say they, they want to play a game that okay get lost i have azure and gc and my own if all these things start creating problem i still have my own i can still run on my own so they don't want to take risk that is a one thing okay the second was the security concern still the banking and the finance they company these company are still they don't put their own customer data on the AWS and all. Reason being is they don't fully trust these third-party companies, uh, you know, with their data. Why? Why reason is the hardware. If you think about the uh, AWS works, is right. They will have hundred petabyte of data uh, hard disk, and it could be like here the Visa's data is there, here Mastercard's data is there, here Amex card is there, here Google's card data is there here citrix uh, data is there here oracle's data is there so it could be lying just you know uh, one bits apart from each other but for the outer world it's a separate but the internal it is that and it is a, it, it poses a risk for them that you know what if something goes wrong tomorrow you know my data will end up showing up there and uh, there has been certain cases in few cloud companies where the wrong mount has appeared uh, on other places and uh, it can happen that you know others data might get exposed somewhere else because it's all our shared cluster these are shared resources okay so these are the challenges it poses so why i have discussed so much things here okay just to give you the background that don't blindly take the name of any tool any software anything that okay hey move from monolith to microservice go to cloud you should always justify your points that if you're going with these approaches this is how you should be doing it and the best approach is the hybrid. So when you suggest somebody, if somebody asks you that, hey, okay, will you use cloud here or will you use your own data centers or what you will use? Then you understand the nature of the applications. Where you can go for the public, you can go for the public where you want to do something, you want to store some data, which is actually publicly visible, right? So you might want to, um, uh, the forums, the reviews, right? The discussions, uh, these kind of data which are already publicly available, why don't you put into the public cloud? Why do you need to you use the private cloud? But something internal information you tend to have in your own private cloud. And that is how you should be configured your application in terms of the cloud side of it. Okay, so these are the <clears throat> things which you can do. And the, the cloud uh, thing has come up that, you know, let's uh, 